I think the Texans could really go out and get a running back, a bona fide Saquon running back. Saquon. Yes, let's go, Allen. Let's do it. Let's go do it. Him. Or Josh yeah. Jacobs, my other one. I think Josh Jacobs to Houston would be big too. I think Josh Jacobs for Saquon Barkley. God damn, you read my mind as you were saying it. Saquon with the yeah, I was, Sa- yep, Saquon right of the there. Texans would be fucking huge. All about the balls podcast with Mark Davis, Chris Kamihart. Luke Rule and Nick the Doc Skirkowitz. Welcome to the Sack House. That's right. I'm Mark Davis. This is all about the Balls Podcast, and I'm joined alongside Chris Kameinhart, Nick the Doc Skirkowitz, and Alan Tomasella. Yes, we finally got Chris and Alan back. It's been a couple weeks. They had a couple things pop up after the Super Bowl. But boys, how are you doing? Chris, I'll start with you. It's been a couple weeks. How have you been? It, it has been a couple weeks. Um, it's been heartbreaking not having football on, but call. I know y'all don't care about it, but college baseball started this past weekend. So LSU four and zero right now. We're going for what's it, going for this repeat natty. What's the gymnastics team's record? I know you watch all the college sports for LSU. Um, I think they're actually pretty pretty very good this year. I keep Livy looks. They're good. popping up on my Facebook. So Livy Livy does look good I've this been, year. They haven't been posting her, but some of the other girls have been posting, I guess, perfect scores. I don't know how gymnastics scores their scores, but if they post a perfect <laughs> score, then, hey, good for them. They tumbled yeah. very good. They, they did flips really good. They did some beams really good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all I know. Doc, they how are you doing? gymnastic very well. Yeah, they make it really well. No, good, man. i uh, got about a month left on this baby leave, and then I go back to work for three days before I'm out for another couple of weeks with surgeries. So, uh, you know, look, man, they're bringing in a specialist from West Point, and he comes one week every three months, and his next week here happens to be the week I return to work. So, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm not no, I don't blame you, man. Take, take, you know. Take the time. Take the advantage of it. They take advantage of you. You get back that advantage of That's them. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's oh, they, they keep both ways. It, and they're calling. I call my boss because I'm I'm still working some stuff, and everybody's just fucking. Everybody's ready for me to come back. A top well, recruiter. Top recruiter. Yeah, almost I mean, there. Yeah, top them? recruiter. Yeah. I'm topping the unit right now for wow. for the FY. God damn. And Alan, how are you working? I've even been there. Yeah, I haven't even been there since uh, since fucking early December. Alan, how are you doing? It's been a couple weeks. You know, we didn't get to say it, but uh, Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl champion, you know, three-time already. So how, how oh, are you shit. feeling, man? Oh, on yeah, the goat. man. Yeah, I mean, he's got like a third of Tom Brady's career already in the books. I, I'll give him that, you know. He, he's a Hall of Famer already. I mean, that's not, you know, that's not debatable, you know. But, I mean, he's got a long way to go to catch up Brady. I mean, it is what it is. Long Who's right? the clown? Three, three more years. Who's the clown? Who's the clown, by the way, in the comments? I honestly don't know. I mean, I mean, it, it was the opening clip or was like literally what you said. And I get it like a transition to where you kind of agreed he is a Hall of Famer, but now it transitions into the, hall, the first ballot conversation. But I mean, like I said, I think, Calvin Johnson's the first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm going to give Patty Mahomes the first ballot. He's, just, he's done I more. Think, I think the guy, I think the guy thought you were a clown. If we're going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I personally think. I th- I personally think uh, that guy uh, rides the short bus to the podcast. My favorite was the last part of the comment where he said, "You're just a liability." <laughs> I was like, "Oh god, <laughs> damn!" Dude. Oh like, shit! The guy. That's how he is, ended it. The, I mean, and honestly, Doc- he's probably like a mouth breathing window licker. Um, <laughs> so I'm not really too concerned. Uh, but you know, keyboard warriors are going to be keyboard warriors. You know, I mean, and shout out our fans. What are you gonna do? And shout out to Luke, you know, Luke Yapel five nine four nine. What a fucking handle on YouTube, man! God damn, that's that's a man right there. That's a hero. He called Doc a liability, so I stand by Luke, not our Luke, but man, I, I saw that and I was like, man, let me let me screenshot this and send it to fucking Doc right no, away. No. But boys, we even, gonna... you sent that in the fucking chat, dude. It wasn't even worthy of a goddamn response. That's how that's how bad that comment was. It wasn't even worthy of a oh. response. It Listen, was a good I laugh. Think everybody, everybody wants to sit here and and get on their little high horses now because of you know Patrick Mahomes winning or whatever. Let, let's all face it. it: you don't win that long in the NFL 
It's going to it's gonna come down. They're going to lose players. Their offensive line is in shambles still. Um, what's his name is getting old. Travis Kelsey is getting old. And, and like, they're, they're just not going to be there. I mean, like I said, when Brady won his third one, it took 10 this years exactly to, to win another one. So, I mean, there was a 10-year gap of the, the Brady from three to four. So even, it, even, it if, even if Mahomes wins, let's say, uh, five in 10 years, that I don't, I still don't think that that is as impressive as winning seven over twenty years. I mean, the the amount of competitiveness, it's, the amount of years he was in the uh, the that's fifty percent championship though. game. Like, I, I mean, yeah, great, but he doesn't have that. He doesn't have the game, like his playing style. He's not going to last. The problem is the Chiefs are doing nothing to better that team. And continue success. That's what the problem well, we'll, is. Well, we'll see. And speaking of that, Doc, that's a good fucking segue transition there because it is free agency time, and this is where the Chiefs can better that team. You know, last year they didn't address the wide receiver need, and now there's a lot of receivers this year. There's a handful of T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, Mike Evans. But that's the, the premises of this episode. It's just kind of getting an idea before the franchise tag of the free agents that are unrestricted that we know are out there before they get tagged. Even if they get tagged, they can still be traded to guys that they might want to be traded to. So, it's just to see the best position players and, you know, their category. I didn't really look at the lot, offensive linemen and tight ends and special teamers, but we're just going to kind of go through our, our list, you know, guys we want to see maybe go here, go there, good fits, you know, maybe neat because some teams have needs, obviously. But, you know, there's a lot of lists. I know Alan said he had 200 pulled up. I mean, we're not going to go over 200 names, but, like, there's a bunch of names. This year for agency, there's a lot of big names. I mean, I know me yeah. and Alan and Jake, we had an argument earlier uh, in the Discord where, yeah, NBA does seem a little more like excitement, but free agency this year, there's a lot of names in the NFL that can make differences for like the Kansas City Chiefs, the Niners, the Lions, the Chicago Bears. I, I mean, I have the Bears on a bunch of lists with these guys. So, like, I don't know where y'all want to start at. I don't know what position you guys want to jump into. So, if anyone has the Best idea, position, but, quarterback, let's go. Well, yeah. it's probably Kirk Cousins. I'm, I'm going to go yeah. Kirk over Baker Mayfield. I think, obviously, <laughs> Baker is the long term guy, but I think Kirk right now can maybe win a team a championship or make them contenders. Right away. Well, I think yeah. I, I mean I'm uh, not a Baker. Big, uh, Baker's an easy, easy route. I mean, we all know Tampa's gonna try to work something out. Baker wants to stay in Tampa. They did good, so I mean, they don't have any other options. Yeah, I mean, they don't have any other options. They screwed themselves making the playoffs, so they're out of the push for drafting a quarterback high. So I mean, I think yeah. Baker's an easy lock. I'm not big on the uh, on the Pat McAfee show, but I saw a clip earlier this week where Baker was on. Uh, I think it was Good Morning America, and uh, he was talking to I think Rachel McAdams or something like that, and he got caught in the background with a, a hot mic talking about oh, yes, how he's that. staying. He's basically staying in Tampa. I I don't think t- he's going anywhere. Baker kind of feels like he's always wanted to search for his place. And I think that he found his place. He found a, a setting for himself. I think he stays in Tampa. I don't think that they let him go anywhere. Does yeah, I think Baker, Baker continue that success, though? Probably losing Mike Evans this year. And Chris Godwin is a name, too. I mean, I don't. he's not a free agent, but like he could be a trade target down the road. I mean... Mike Evans is – I think it's only two teams that go for Mike or yeah. he realistically go there. We're going to talk to him in a minute, but I think Baker is the for sure guy that's going to stay. I mean, I think out of the quarterbacks, it's it's Kirk Cousins. It's what Kirk Cousins does. I, I think, like Chris said, Baker's with Tampa. I mean, he, he did a lot. I, I think the only other team that might make a push for Baker, and this is not to be biased, would be the Falcons. I think that they, they're going to try for any fucking quarterback that's available, trade or free agency. So I think if Baker is not with Tampa – it would be Atlanta, but I think he's back with the Buccaneers. Uh, yeah. I just think it's too it's too simple, it's too easy. He made it work, and I mean your dog fucking agrees. He's over here squeaking that goddamn toy. <laughs> he understands Baker's gonna be a goddamn Buccaneer when it's all said and done. Yeah, I mean I think I think the Falcons is a perfect, I mean literally a perfect spot for any quarterback. They have the offensive talents that they've drafted the past three years, first round. They just they need that quarterback, and I think Cousins would be perfect for them. I'm also looking at the Raiders, maybe making a push. I mean, I think Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, they would definitely benefit with um, they Kirk. Didn't even think about the Raiders. I, think, I I don't see. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see Pittsburgh pushing for it, making a big splash. I know they said they're probably going to bring somebody in to 
have a little competition for Pickett, but I mean that wouldn't if they bring Cousins in. That, well, that's not saw, uh, Russell, Wilson, <laughs> we're trying to get somebody to fire him up. Hey, Russell Wilson's him. odds to go to Pittsburgh just dropped to minus two fifty today. So, I mean, I, I think that I think that it's possible they go after somebody like that. I don't think that Pittsburgh is is going to be in contention with either Baker or um, Kirk Cousins, but. Man, those are really the only two names for quarterbacks that are out there right now. You got Gardner Minshew. Maybe maybe Gardner Minshew decides to go somewhere, but he's not a guy that's going to take you to the next level. And But like Doc just said, it's not a competition with Kenny Pickett. I mean, the guy is garbage. And so any quarterback they bring in is probably going to be better than all the quarterbacks they have in that team. I, I mean, I, I just like the Kirk to Pittsburgh personally. I get it like they drafted Kenny Pickett, but you know, people moved on quick. I think, though, that Pickett – I mean, sorry, not Pickett, but Kirk Cousins and Pittsburgh is a good fit. I think they have a good offense. I'm not saying great. Obviously, now they have Arthur Smith, so we're going to see what that happens with that fucking coordinator now. You know how I feel about him. But if he gets Kirk Cousins, a quarterback that he can finally actually use. They have Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. I think Pickens is solid, too. I'm not thinking he's a beast, but with Kirk Cousins, it might make him play harder. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, second half of the season, they were on fire. And Pat Freemuth will be healthy. So that, that's a good offense. They're in a win-now mode on defense. So the defense is set. They just need a cornerback or two to help Joey Porter Jr., who's a, who's a second-year player now. But I think the I think the offense is there. It's like Atlanta. They they need a quarterback. And I think I think Pittsburgh would love him, too. I think the fans would embody Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins would embody the Pittsburgh Steelers, too. The Steel Nation, I think he would fit, fit Steel City. I, I really do. And I don't think it's going to happen, but that's a fit that I would love to see. I think him with Mike Tomlin would be fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I just think that there's – it's hard to have this episode and talk about free agency without including trades because there's so many trade candidates that are out there right now too. Um, I mean, Justin Fields is most likely – I everybody sees it. It's in the odds favorites. I, I think he ends up in, in Atlanta. Um, but obviously Russell Wilson will need to get traded to Pittsburgh, and that's a thing that – Russell Wilson, I think, can have success with Arthur Smith's run first. Um, really, I, I think it's kind of a fundamentally easier system than what Sean Payton is trying to run. And I think Russell Wilson feeds off of a simpler system like he did when he was in Seattle. And I think that that would be a good fit for him in, in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I gotta, I gotta disagree with the Pittsburgh notion. I mean, um, Cousins is is aging. I think Pittsburgh's looking for a long term solution. Yeah, um, I, agree. I think with Pickett, they're they're trying to bring a guy to fire him up and get him going. I mean, otherwise they know the time is running out. Mitchell Trubisky didn't work. I mean, they've been struggling since Big Ben left, and I think that they're looking for a long term, long term guy, and that might be the draft. They may get a sleeper in the draft that nobody's you know uh, looking to take quite as high as they might, um, but sometimes you got to reach to to try and find success. So I don't think Kirk Cousins is the right fit for Pittsburgh because they're not really looking for a stopgap right now. Um, I think the ones that are is is Atlanta because Atlanta has the tools to be successful. Their biggest problem last year was the quarterback position, the biggest thing holding them back. They got a great one-two punch in the run game. Um, the receivers, I mean, it's hard to really I, – I, I still like the – the receiving game in Atlanta, it's hard to really put anything on it with, with what they've been dealing with the quarterback position. But um, I, I think Atlanta's a perfect fit. That defense to go with it, I'm saying I'm Kirk now. He comes to Atlanta. I've been saying it. I mean, I know Alan wasn't on the show, but you, Luke, and Chris, you, you've all heard it. I'll be fucking excited. I will have a heart attack of joy, of excitement for us. Now, we need other receivers because really only Drake London and Kyle Pitts are on the the – the roster we where we have some wide receiver two issues, but hey, number eight, we might go get a doozy. We might, you know, he might fall to us. You never know. Neighbors could fall and never know what's gonna happen in the top half of the draft. But if you guys if you guys can lock down cousins early in free agency, it opens that door to get maybe a T. Higgins. I, I don't I don't think we have yeah, the cap I mean, for T. Higgins. That's the problem. These are, but we we, we no, can get Tyler and, Boyd and though. T. We can get Tyler Boyd getting... or Gabe Davis. Yeah, Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd yeah. is probably going to go because T. Higgins is going to get tagged. I mean, I know it's not out yet, but they they're heavily talking about how they, he's going to get tagged. They're not letting him go. Um, but man, I just I just don't think Kirk Cousins' connection to his city to that city 
with Justin Jefferson there, I just don't I don't think that he steps away from that because he's done this before, right? He's played the game where he leveraged himself into a bigger contract and all that stuff. I think he is valued there. He especially we saw it in that um, in that documentary with the quarterbacks. He's he's respected there. The team loves him. I think that that's just a place he doesn't well, want Kirk to step wants to away come. From. I don't mind trading for Justin Jefferson too. Bring that motherfucker down with him. He can come <laughs> down to Atlanta. He'd get along with fucking Drake London, B. John Robinson. Might have to trade Tyler Algier or B. John. I actually have to trade B. John to get Justin Jefferson. But hey, I would take that trade in a heartbeat for JJ and Kirk Cousins for a couple of years. Um, come on, why not? I mean, I don't. I think that no, that's he, a great trade idea, though, Bijan for for JJ, and just so you can get Kirk. I think that's a great option. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have to throw some picks in oh, there yeah. too. I don't know. I mean, Minnesota's a couple of young quarterbacks that they're that they're trying to work. Um, Their quarterback maybe draft too. Yeah, Cousins is. Yeah, Cousins. Cousins is loved in in Minnesota, but at the same time, you know, this is a team that has had Cousins now for some time, and they continue. I mean, all minute. Look at Rizlov. All Minnesota fans blame Cousins. Every Minnesota fan I know says Cousins can't win in the big games. You know, it's kind of a scapegoat situation. Like, yeah, he is loved there, but at the same time. How much losing, like how much losing in the playoffs or not making the playoffs can you do year after year with the guy that the city loves at the at the reins and still not not make it all the way and, I'm not and mistaken, hold on to that, I think you know? Kirk's only got one playoff win with the Vikings, and I think Chris remembers that one. Kyle Rudolph in the corner of the end zone, nice walk off touchdown in overtime. Before the I, I think though No, you're good. Oh my bad. I think though that uh that the market is going to get reset though. And, and right now they're talking about Dak commanding the market um, at about 60 million. And, and so I think that God, teams man. are going to have to wait before that happens. I don't think teams are going to want to sign anybody before the, those different little stipulations come out. Those little wrinkles come out. Obviously Dak's not a free agent, but that contract's going to get reworked because they have to. And that's going to reset that market. And a lot of teams aren't going to want to do that before. They're not going to want to sign before. These no, I agree. Happen. I agree. No, but I, I think, I think like you said, it's, it's down to Kirk Cousins. We already know what Baker's going to do. Doc hammered at a good name earlier. That's the receivers. Mike Evans. I think personally the, the best fit. I, I, I don't think he's the best receiver. Like, cause of like long-term, I think really – I hate to say it. I think Michael Pittman Jr. is the best receiver in this free agency. You have T. Higgins, you have Pittman, and you have Evans. Evans is the, yeah, the best receiver of all time out of the three because of what he's done in his career. But if we're talking like long-term, you know, what you want as someone, Pittman's the guy. But I like what Doc was saying, Mike Evans. And I think only two teams fit him. Kansas City Chiefs, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Does he resign and retire with the Bucs? Or does he go to Patrick Mahomes, get another ring or two, that will maybe that will definitely keep Kelsey there. Now you know he's in a ring chase, obviously. But you give Patrick Mahomes a big number one receiver, a guy that's way higher than what they have now. Yes, you have Rice now that goes to number two, and you have Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans, the Kansas City, would put the Chiefs over the top even more than they already are. It would be phenomenal. <laughs> and it's a I mean, win think- for both sides. It's a unique position because Mike Evans might be willing to take a pay cut. In his in the later years, in order to get that extra ring, he's going to a team that he knows can win now, a team that is Super Bowl ready. And the Tom Brady era was so short lived. You know, he got that that taste of greatness, and then Brady played a couple of years, retired, and now you know. I mean, Baker Mayfield was Baker Mayfield. You know, he wasn't elite. You know what I mean? So he's kind of like shit. You know, what am I going to do? I'm trying to win another ring, and. I think the only way that, that happens is Kansas City, and if they can, if he if he can take that pay cut, like if they can get him into that pay cut, man, that works all the way around for Kansas City because they got cap issues too. Yeah, the thing is with Kansas City that they're they are limited with their cap, and their problems are areas where they have to correct them. I think we've seen year after year after year where they've just said, you know what, we're going to go with these younger, with these cheaper guys at wide receiver, and we're going to build up these other areas. Their defense is one of the youngest in the league, so that's they're going to be fine there. They're going to have to re-sign Chris Jones, so that's going to command money. And then also – their offensive line is in is in shambles. They they had the uh, Smith was the most flagged uh, offensive lineman the entire year. He's a free agent. They're letting him walk. They've got to go out and get guys. And there's a number of offensive linemen that are in uh, free agency, like Tyron Smith. Um, do the Cowboys have the cap space to re-sign him? Even is he injured all the time? Are they going to want to do that? Um, you've got a couple of linemen from the from the Patriots that are that are available. Trent Brown is a name. 
name from the Patriots who's available, um, who can be good in a uh, gap scheme offensive line. And, and I think that they have options there. They're going to spend elsewhere, not on wide receiver. I just think historically Kansas City's never like made a big splash in free agencies, especially offensively. And I don't think we're going to see a big change this year. I think it, it depends on what Mike Evans' mindset is. Does he want to chase the ring like Doc is saying, or does he want the bag? I mean, I think if he wants the bag, I think Carolina is going to be a huge fit. I think they'll throw yeah, a bag at him to get Mike uh, to give Bryce Young that number one. And yeah. the head coach over with the Panthers was Tampa's offensive coordinator last year, and yeah. Mike Evans had a big year. That would last help year. Bryce Young too. So, you no. Know, tr- yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then and, I think if, <laughs> I think if and, he wants if he wants to chase a ring too and not go to the Chiefs, I think the Jets would be another option for him. I think yeah. maybe take a little price cut, go Aaron Rodgers, and have that little Super Bowl run like he did with Tom Brady. But I think also traditionally throughout years we see a lot of these big name guys they end up within the division, and that it's oftentimes because within the division they end up hiring coaches from those teams that they're competing against the most, and then those guys are bringing guys with them. You see these players the most, so you end up giving them the bag. And 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 I mean, I, there's just a number of of guys over history where you've just seen they go. I think that could happen with Pittman too, Alan. Is I think Pittman could be on the Houston Texans. I, I like T. Higgins going there, but like like I like you, oh, yeah. I agree with you. I think Higgins is going to be tacked. But I'm t- I told Chris, and I told Luke and Doc Higgins uh, Higgins with the the Texans would be phenomenal. Nico Collins is probably uh, we don't know if he's going to be there after 2024. But if you get Michael Pittman Jr. to the Houston Texans, that leader. To help Tank Dell, to help Nico Collins, uh, Noah Brown's going to be gone. But you have Xavier Hutchinson, who's young. You have Michael Pittman in that little fucking rain right there with C.J. Stroud and whatever running back they want to get, and tight end too because they're going to lose Dalton Schultz. But that's a good fit too in the division. You've seen Michael Pittman for a few I, years. Go get him. Like just do it. It would fit so well. I, I do. I think it depends on what your what your options are for the at the tight end position because you you bring in. Michael Pittman, he then replaces that that uh, guy, that possession receiver that you brought in, that tight end to be that Dalton Schultz that you brought in for him to be that. He's going to replace that in the offense. So you're going to then transition to maybe some of these other guys that are more blocking tight ends. But it really becomes the scheme issue there. Yeah, I, I just think the receivers are so big. I, I hope T. Higgins isn't tagged. I mean, I, I mean, I get it. Like, it's it's like good for the Bengals, yeah, that they need them. I mean, they're going to lose Boyd. But yeah. uh, I think, like I said, Higgins and the Panthers, too. And, and I was even saying the Patriots. I, I, I said you can get – maybe if you get your quarterback now and you get the number one receiver with T. Higgins as your number one, now you're starting to build that core. T. Higgins is pretty young. I know he had some injuries last year. But T. Higgins, the Patriots, I, in my opinion, would be good if you can get Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whichever route you're going to go there, if you guys decide to go quarterback. I, I think Carolina and New England, too, both young teams that are rebuilding – but maybe compete in a couple of years. I, I think if you get T against there, good fit for both those squads too. Yeah. Yeah, I have I have Carolina. If T Higgins doesn't get tagged, I have Carolina throwing a bag at him as well. I mean, he'll easily fit into that number one role, which he's been shadowed over Jamar Chase. So I mean, you know, as a as a football player, you you want to be the number one. So Yeah, I mean I'm going to tell you who I'm looking at in these uh, in this receiver class, and that is the man I think that is going to go to Chicago, and that's going to be Tyler Boyd. Two-time 1,000-yard receiver, um, I mean, consistently putting up yards, making big plays, showing what he can do. I think he'd be a great number two fit in Chicago. That's, that's where my money's at on that one. Another guy that I think could end up with Chicago, uh, because they've traditionally liked that that small, fast wide receiver. I think that Chicago could go on the cheaper end here and try and get uh, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown from uh, Doc. Arizona. I was also Doc. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was listening to it like we were talking about the guy before on uh, on the YouTube channel I watch. I think that Calvin Ridley, if he can settle into the number two role behind DJ Moore, don't get superstar money, but you know decent number two money. I think Calvin Ridley with DJ Moore and probably Caleb Williams. If you, if you, I don't think you keep him fields, but you get Caleb Williams with Calvin Ridley and DJ Moore. I think that's fucking phenomenal. I really do. I know you're going to lose Mooney, but you put in fucking, um, you put in a guy like Calvin Ridley or Tyler Boyd as number two would be good, would solid too. With Caleb Williams and DJ Moore, I think that's a good fit. Well, that's yeah, the no, funny I think- thing. 
I think Ridley going over to Chicago, I mean, taking the top off the defense, letting more utilize that middle of the field, short drop-offs like he has been, or even Calvin Ridley over to Kansas City. I mean, I know he's a little bit on the older side, but I think Calvin Ridley would – I know we already said they probably won't make a splash in the offensive side, but – I think sh- Maybe they take I a think risk. Chicago get one of these good number two receivers. Are like I know Doc hit. I know Doc hit it on the hammer there. Or hit the nail. Hit the nail with the hammer. Whatever the fuck that goddamn saying is. He he called it. I think Chicago <laughs> get one of these number two receivers. That's solid. I really think that it's going to help Caleb Williams. To, uh, that's who's coming there. Uh, it's it's done. So yeah, I think it's going to be one of these guys looking for a move up. Right. It's not going to be a T Higgins even if he doesn't get tagged because T T Higgins wants to be number one somewhere. That's why I think Carolina is such a perfect fit for him. Uh, T. Higgins is is done being shadowed uh, by Jamar Chase and everybody else. So Tyler Boyd did a phenom- has been doing a phenomenal job as a number two or a three in uh, Cincinnati. I like him. I think he'd be a great fit tagging up with DJ Moore. Calvin Ridley had a great year coming off of his suspension. Uh, you know, obviously, you know they're both the same age. So honestly, they both got got time left. They're both you know stars. I think that they can both do great things. I'd be good with Calvin Ridley. You know, and honestly, Calvin Ridley probably could have been a lot better if if Lawrence didn't have such a bad year last year. He had a terrible year uh, that I think held Ridley back in a lot. Um, but it, it's just it's funny to me when I look at the top receivers available and everything has Darnell Mooney on there, and I'm like, I mean, Darnell Mooney kind of got written out of the offense in Chicago, but Darnell Mooney really hasn't done shit since his breakout year in what I think. I think I with a Josh Allen or yeah, Mahomes, I, mean, I think Mooney would fit perfect. I think a guy like a guy with a big arm, a guy that Mooney can use utilize his speed. I think Mooney would be a good spot for would be a good one for Kansas City. I he's, I see, he's, I can a, see he's a guy City. who could take the top off. the The problem with Mooney is the same problem with a lot of these fast small guys is they drop balls and and you know. But I I do think that he's a cheap option that Kansas City will probably go after because they can sign him for let's say three million. But you know, a lot of this really depends on those teams that have that big number in cap space. And you know, right now one team we're really not talking a lot about is the Commanders, and they've got the most. Cap Cap space. They've got $83 million in cap space. Um, and, and I think that they're going to overhaul that, that entire team. So where are some of those guys going to go and where are the commanders going to try to, uh, you know, make decisions? Obviously we, we try to pick apart different teams and say, all right, this guy's got to go this, he, this to this place because uh, that's the thing that they're missing. But the commanders are really missing a lot. So where are they going to spend that money at? And, and I could see, I can see a, um, I can see Mike Evans going to to Washington if they end up going uh, quarterback. I mean, it's it's something where you got to look at who has the money because they're going to spend the money. Here's the deal, though. I mean, you talk about about spending the money. I mean, look at all the money they shed last year. They traded their all the all their defensive line away. Anybody that was worth a damn. You know what I mean? This is a team that broke down and went into full rebuild mode mid-season last year. Are they really prepared to jump on it? What I think personally, Washington's going to do. I mean, they're going to spend money because you got to spend money. Uh, That's you, the point. This, yeah, you can't you can't get through the NFL being the Oakland Athletics. You know what I mean? They're going to spend mm-hmm. money. So I see them throwing um, crazy amounts of money for somebody. You know, if T Higgins or you know or not T Higgins, uh, yeah, T Higgins. Um, you know, throwing the bag at him overpaying them just to bring a couple of stars to help fill the seats and get people excited to watch the commanders play football. Um, I see them. Well, I mean, they got a deep, they got a deep depth chart on the running back, but um, I think with the uncertainty in the quarterback with, uh, I don't, I, you know, Howell had a great start to the year last year and really fizzled out towards, towards the end of the season uh, in that second half. So with the uncertainty of quarterback with what they gave away last year, I don't see them making any crazy moves other than just to solely spend money, which doing that in a long-term deal right now is not going to be the answer because uh, I think, I think personally with the movies watching right now is rebuilding the draft this year, um, get that quarterback, get him a year. And then, you know, look at free agents coming in next year and really start to build that team up next year. I don't I, think this is the I year. I think Allen, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean just lost honestly, Allen, I think you are on something. I know Chris, he said Commanders playoffs this past year. I think that he was maybe one year too soon. I think they could maybe pull the Houston Texans. They have three picks inside <laughs> the top 40, four inside the top 67. I get the Bears control the draft because they have two in the top 10, but the Commanders have a lot of draft picks early on. And like you said, a lot of money. They're going to have a rookie quarterback which means rookie deal, which means spend money now. You get that vet or uh, that rookie quarterback, Drake May, Jane Daniels, maybe even get ballsy and get Caleb Williams if somehow you can get the first pick. 
and then you go get these vets and you start competing in year one. Maybe year two is when it starts to happen, but you get ready for maybe 2024, potentially 2025. Magic Johnson is the new owner with, uh, I forgot his name out there. They're going to spend money and guys are going to want to come because it's not Dan Snyder anymore. So I think the commanders could be onto something if yeah. the ownership actually drafts I think, well. Yeah. And I, if, if we're well, all and I, gonna, that's what I'm, I, I'm right on board with that. I think the big thing is going to be that draft result. If they come out with a very hyped up draft, you're talking trading up for Caleb Williams, um, those four picks in the top 67. If they draft very well early on, I definitely, definitely see the possibility of them making uh, splashes. I think Jaden Daniels took And if we're all going to sit on this and, and – if we're all going to poo-poo on the, the NFL game script and bring that up at every opportunity we can, you also got to look at it when the teams get turned over, the NFL always wants that team to do well. I'm not saying that the game script is real. We all joke about it, right? <laughs> but I, I do think oh, that no, there dude. is something. I know. Hey, no, no, Alan, I know, okay, okay. I know well, next year's script. I know next year's script. something to it. I'm not saying it's real, yeah, but I'm just oh, saying no. it's real. The script yeah. is not three-peat next listen, year, by the way, boys. It's Aaron Rodgers returning. They're going to rewrite the Cinderella storybook for the New York oh, Jets, God. and they're going to give the ageless yeah, ageless Aaron Rodgers off a torn meniscus, and he's going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't Listen. think I don't think Rodgers could have helped against, that team last year. Two, that team was over. It's a script, dude. Like, on, guy, it's going to be the Chiefs here. versus the Jets, AFC Championship. Do the Chiefs go for three-peat, or do the New York Jets finally get some fucking momentum me, there? But, yeah, go back. Sorry, let's carry on. Let me just – let me just say this. I, I'm going to give you the top uh, the top seven teams in uh, cap space. Actually, I'll go eight. All right, you got Commanders, Patriots, Titans, Bears, Colts, Bengals, Texans, and then the Lions. Those are the top eight teams. Those, all of those teams over $50 million in cap space. Now, $50 million really isn't a lot, but when you look at the Texans at uh, seven, they got $61 million. I think the Texans could really go out and get a running back. A bona fide Saquon. Back. Yes, Saquon. let's go, Allen. Let's do it. Let's go do it. Him. Or Josh yeah. Jacobs, my other one. I think Josh Jacobs to Houston would be big too. I think Josh Jacobs for Saquon Barkley. God ah, damn, you read my mind as you were saying it. Saquon with the yeah. I was, Sa- yep, Saquon right of the there. Texans would be fucking huge. I think Saquon and an offensive lineman, and then use the rest of your money for for whatever pieces you need. But uh, you know that sixty one million that's enough to go out get Saquon in a. I don't even care. Pay that man twenty million dollars. You know that over the next five years, that's what he's got left, right? So you go out and you pay him what you need to get him on the team, and then get get an offensive lineman to, to plug in so that you can protect your young quarterback, your star, star quarterback. You don't need a wide receiver because you've got talent on that team. Go get him a running back in a running game that's going to be able to help balance that team. That's what Man. I mean. And speaking of running backs, Derrick Henry. Dallas or Baltimore? It's Dallas Oof. or Baltimore, boys. I said Dallas should have dra- traded for him in the, in the middle of the season last year, and I got hammered by some of you guys in the, the dis- or the chat. And then when it came down a few weeks later, y'all were like, damn, maybe they should have fucking went after Derrick Henry. And I was like, yeah, they should have gone after Derrick Henry. I think the Cowboys should have gone after King Henry. It would have been way better to have Tony Pollard as your home run hitter like he was with Zeke Elliott, get him as the number two running back, stop making him the number one. Or Baltimore. I think that he's obviously been linked to the Ravens. So but that's- I think those two fits, perfect. For King, that's it right there. Just like you said, like Zeke Elliott. Do the do the Cowboys want to repeat and bring in another guy that's just like Zeke Elliott? I don't know because the Cowboys' offensive line. I mean, Derrick Henry still. I don't know. Like it's, he still has it. I mean, I, my Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry got the fucking Zeke treatment his last year in Dallas with Tony Pollard. Derrick Henry got the same shit this year. There were so many because t- I had him on fantasy. And I was fucking screaming at the TV every week why we're not giving the ball to King Henry or wasting our time giving it to the backup in Tennessee. Derrick Henry is going to go somewhere. Um, honestly, I see, I mean, Pacheco had a breakout year, so I don't see Kansas City. But, I mean, Derrick Henry is going to go to a team that's ready to win now. Baltimore, as much as I would like to say, Baltimore is a good fit uh, with Keaton Mitchell, Gus Bus. I mean, they, well, they, got, a a deep, they got a deep backfield. He He's a free agent as well. They I mean, if they don't bring him back, I could see the opening. But I know Keaton Mitchell was high on him until he got hurt. So I know he's kind of looking like the running back of the future. So are we going to bring in a guy to overshadow him? Because he put up numbers. That man balled out when he played. He just got hurt. So I don't know if, if Derrick Henry's yeah, well, away. Um, 
God, it's it's tough to place the Ravens put, where just, I would put him. Chargers would be a good spot if they don't so bring back Eckler. Team, so many players, though. They, they've got a lot of players on that defense that are, that are going out. They've got a safety Zietler. They've got um, Patrick Queen. They've got uh, defensive linemen. They, they've got a lot of free agents. They're going to have to sign, and they don't have a lot of money. So, so they're going to have to be very um, smart with what they do. You're not going to get one of these top flight guys for a cheap contract, I don't think. And that's why – that's where I think <laughs> – what we were talking about earlier probably comes into play the most because I think the guy that's going to get left in the dust is going to be Austin Eckler. I don't think Eckler's going to get very many calls. I don't think he's going to have high demand. He's going to end up being one of the guys that's left over into the season, and then he gets a call early in uh, you know preseason or something like that. Signs I think the Eagles give that. I, I really think the Eagles give uh, Austin Eckler a look at. I think that I get it. Jalen Hurts, some of, some of us aren't high on him. I thought he had a good season a couple years ago. He was actually my MVP coming into the season. I thought he was going to uh, show he should have won MVP if he didn't get hurt the last two games two seasons ago. I think having him with Jalen Hurts with that run pass option, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, that might even make A.J. Brown a little happier, calm him down a little bit. Dallas Goddard, you can't stack the box. I know Austin Eckler's not a big home run hitter, but you have him there for dump offs. You have him there for little routes that he could run. He's just as explosive as Chris McCaffrey is in the passing game. People forget about that. I think Eckler at the Philly would be smart. I think that Howie Roseman tries and makes it happen. I really do. I really think they go after number 30 from the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah. I I I think it'd be a good move too, because it also gives Hertz another option in the check down or in the backfield in the flat, you know, um, the scrambles and the tush push. And and, I mean, we, there, there was a lot of struggle uh, that I kind of saw. I mean, he made some big plays, uh, with the receiving core last year, but there were a lot of times where he just didn't have an option, and Austin Eckler gives him that option because uh, DeAndre Swift definitely did not do it for him. Yeah. I think early in the season he looked really good, and they they were opening up holes because the offense was – uh, getting the ball downfield and they were opening up the, the running game with the pass plays and somewhere along the line that changed and, and teams started taking away, trying to make Jalen hurts, throw those tight window passes. The same thing I say all the time about Lamar Jackson's they, they were doing the same thing to Jalen hurts. And you saw off also the offensive line was, a, was an issue there. And man, De- Deandre Swift is still had some good step on him. So Maybe teams don't love him, but I think that he had a good step. They may bring him back. The Eagles, again, are another one I loved them when they used him. I loved them yeah. when they used him, but another one that they fucking... But the Eagles are one of those teams, though, that still, over the last few years, especially with this uh, with this GM, they don't go out and, and sign running backs at, at uh, you know, big contracts. They, they're not going to go out and get a guy when they can probably bring in a couple guys cheap. Well, no, it... It's not – It's not. I don't think that's the issue. It's what we talked about early on in the season. It's that there is no real one-back system anymore, or at least very few. I mean, Cleveland will be a one-back with Nick Chubb. Well, actually not even because they, um, they got Kareem Hunt, the greatest kicker in NFL history. So, you know. <laughs> I think that Niner um, – Even, even Nick Chubb's not a – true number one. Even the Niners – I mean – Early on in the season, the Niners were splitting a lot more touches than I was comfortable with. Like I, again, having CMC in the Dynasty League, uh, I mean CMC still got points, but there were a lot of situations where I forget his name right now. Um, I've had a bit to drink tonight, but uh, the backup was getting a lot more touches or drives. We saw it in the playoffs, hey. drives where CMC wasn't even touching a football. Hey, and Luke hit that uh, that four and a half over rushing by uh, Eli Mitchell in the Super Bowl. All right, he, <laughs> he hit that one. He Mitchell, did hit it, that's but- right. Boys, we give a lot of love to the offense. Chris, I want to ask you some about some defense. What defensive guy are you looking at? Like, what 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 guy that's going to stand out coming into this free agency time? I mean, I think the biggest the biggest one is like the name that all of us are looking at is Chris Jones with the Chiefs. Like, I know he said as soon as the season ended, he wanted to play for the Chiefs. The Chiefs were hesitant on paying him last year. He sat out a little bit, but they reworked a deal. And I mean, if they tag him, his tag is going to be up near thirty million. So I mean, I, I think franchise tagging him is not not an option. I think they're going to have to work out a deal, and they they need. I mean, he he was a wrecking ball on that defensive line, and the defensive line is pretty much what won them the Super Bowl. So they need to keep those guys intact. So I think that's going to be the biggest eyes right there. Is can the Chiefs work out a deal with Chris Jones to pay him? 
Yeah, I know it was a big mutual thing that the two of them want to stay together. Um, but another big problem last year was the money. It was the money, and they finally reached a one-year deal to to get him back on the field. Um, there's a lot of, you know, talk about where Chris Jones can go. I'm trying to find. I was reading an article earlier. I'm trying to find where I saw Detroit was on that list. I know. I think Chicago um, and Houston would be good too, Doc, for Chris Jones. A lot of money, and they're young. Pair yeah. Monte Sweat, Monte I, I Sweat, and Chris that... Jones together, Doc. Like, don't tell me your juices wouldn't be flowing right there. They would absolutely be flowing, but with roughly seventy million in cap space, I think. After, I mean, we're still making uh, cuts to the to the league year to to save some money. We just cut a couple of big guys, so we're still opening up money. But, um, I mean, we still got to bring back Jalen Johnson. He's gone. You know what I mean? I think that's. I think, I think Niners are Houston is where he's going. I really, I think the Niners were a big team he wanted to go to in the, the trade deadline, hey, but, and I think that's where they're going to go. I think he's going to. Sign with the Niners. I think. But, I but think. Thinking about I think that, though, instead of making the move to improve, I mean, Jalen Johnson is an improvement on the defense. But I think instead of going out and making like a Chris Jones move, I think the Bears are willing to throw more money at Jalen Johnson to keep him in Chicago. Um, so I think that kind of hinders us a little bit. But I think that's the move. That's the most important move right there. But I also think that when you look at the Chiefs, what are they going to prioritize at this point? Because they got Legarius Sneed, and he's just as much a, 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 a part of that Super Bowl as anything else. The number one thing that propelled them to the Super Bowl was their defensive backs, was, was their ability to shut down the passing game on multiple quarterbacks. That's what's got them into that Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, we can say Patrick Mahomes is great, but that def- those defensive backs are, is the catalyst. That's what but got them there. Snee's not the number one and there anymore, though. That's the thing. McDuffie is all, is all... M- – McDuffie is not. No, McDuffie is a slot corner. McDuffie was the slot corner all year long. He was the slot corner. He made all pro as the slot. He could guard corner. outside if they really need him to, though. He was a beast his rookie year as well. I mean, yeah. people forget that. Man, I mean, he was he's he's good, but it's not as easy to switch from that slot to the outside as any of those big name wide receiver uh, cornerbacks. They all they fight against doing that because they don't want to have to guard inside. So so trying to do that and going away from from Legarius Sneed and just so you can sign an aging Chris Jones, I don't think that that's where they end up going. I think they let Chris Jones walk because Chris Jones is going to command twenty, twenty million. At I mean, least. isn't I see Chris Jones I mean, staying? I, I, I think that Snead, though. I think, like Doc says, I think they're going to sacrifice Snead if anything. I think that Chris Jones being there, he's the anchor to that defense. He was top. I think he was number two in the PFF ranking for defense tackle. I know we have our issues with PFF, Chris, but that's where they did rank him at. I think, though, that Snead could be on the Indianapolis Colts or the Baltimore Ravens. I think those are two teams that could snag Snead away. We already mentioned uh, off-air, Marlon Humphrey might be gone. The Ravens need cornerbacks. And what do the Ravens do good? They Dude, play I'm great defense. You, Snead would fit with the Ravens. They they don't but, have any money. Guy, they're in the negative. They're hey, in negative. So are the Saints. But guess what? Right they fucking they sign guys every goddamn money. year somehow. No, no, no. The Saints are... The Saints are and they 80 still, million, all right? There's a big difference between 80 million. We were, we were and 90 million. Yeah, the, Saint, the Saints still get Derek Carr. Yeah, they still, still bring up guys that are 80 million. Yeah. 800,000 is easy. You can clear that. For 30, for what, what did you guys get called for? 30 million a year? The Ravens got so yeah, many 35. guys. And just Jesus talking about that, Christ. just talking about that, I, I said it earlier. The, the Ravens have a safety Ziegler. They have Patrick Queen. They got Matabuke in their defensive huh. lineman. He's the third. He's the third. That's a big guy name too. In the PFF That's for a big free name. agents. So that is another big name. Got, guys, they've got us resign. They've got to. They've got to fill in I these think, spaces. And and they don't. Yeah, have I, I think like you said, Matabuke, M- M- whatever. I think Niners or Bills, obviously <laughs> Ravens. But like God, he he's a big piece. He had a 15 and a half sacks last year, or 13 and a half sacks last year, five and a half yeah. the year before he. For a defense tackle, yeah. that's fucking phenomenal. I mean, but phenomenal, yeah. I mean, he got a half. He got half a sack in thirteen of the games. I mean, the man is just like Chris Jones for the Chiefs. Like mm-hmm. some pass rushers too. I think that Josh Allen, Brian Burns. I think Brian Burns. The Rams almost traded for him a couple years ago or last year. I think getting Brian Burns maybe can break out with the Los Angeles Rams. I think getting him there with Aaron Donald hey. that would be great for the Los Angeles Rams. That young defense. You pair him up with the. Uh, fifth year player, six year player with Brian Burns, who maybe can break out. The pressure's on Aaron Donald. That's who they double team. So that means more looks for Brian Burns. I got a better pass rusher. I got a better pass rusher for you. 
Danielle Hunter, 16 and a half sacks, 23 tackles for a loss. He's up two. And I think that the Vikings, again, they're in they're in a cap situation. And who are they going to keep? I think Daniel Hunter was a trade option during the season. They were looking at maybe moving him. He wanted out. I think Daniel Hunter walks away. And like you said, the Rams is a great option. No, 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 no. You know, you know where Daniel Hunter's going. You you hit it earlier about staying in the division. You know where Daniel Hunter's going. Okay. All He's right, already been linked on multiple sources. They you got know money. damn well. They got money. Where Danielle Hunter I think, is going. I think it's the other purple. He is calling Soldier Green Field Bay home. Packers. No, no, no. Watch Green your fucking get, mouth. Get, I, get, I get, get the Ravens are like, they're barely under the cap, over the cap, but I'm telling you right now, I think they can get Daniel Hunter as well. I get it. They have some cap issues, but teams do it. We, the cap's a joke. They're, they're, they'll clear and they'll make room. They'll, they'll fucking restructure deals. I think Daniel Hunter is more of a fit, honestly, than Snead. I think Daniel Hunter is the top priority for the Baltimore Ravens. I think that pass rusher they're going to get there. I think it fits it fits the defense. That's what they like. They like pass rushers in Baltimore. They can get Daniel Hunter. Josh Allen, another fucking guy. I think he ends up in Detroit possibly with uh Hutchinson. You know, they have a lot of cap, like you mentioned, Allen. They need help on the pass rush and the, the corners. You go get fucking Josh Allen. Like that's perfect. The, not the quarterback Josh Allen, boys. The guy number 41 from the Jacksonville Jaguars, Josh yeah, Allen. Yeah, 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 you get him out there with fucking Hutchinson. You know, both both sides of the ball are now being uh pressured. That's phenomenal for the Lions, in my opinion. I think that you got a guy like Josh Allen out there, it would do wonders for you. I think there is no doubt that uh, whether it be Allen, Burns, Hunter, I mean, there there is no doubt the Lions are definitely targeting an edge rusher to go opposite of Hutchinson because the the tempo this guy brings to the game and just the havoc that he wreaks on the offensive line, on the quarterback. I mean, you pair – I mean, honestly, I could put you out there, Mark, and you can no, make some dude. shit happen. You know what I'm saying? If I had I mean, tear my ACL in high yeah. school, dude, I would fucking put him out there. Dude, I know. You, dude, you'd be – You saw me flag football. Trust me, I know. You'd be – dude, you would be carrying the Falcons right now. But, no, I think uh, – yeah, I think the 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 opportunity on the defense that the Lions present, that's their biggest issue right now. I think the Lions still need to go after a receiver. I think they need a, another receiver, number two, with uh, Amon Ra. I know they're very happy with the guys they have, but I'm just not convinced. I haven't seen um, consistency from them. So I think Josh Reynolds dropped that is, pass. Yeah, I think getting another edge rusher to, to opposite uh, Hutchinson, and then I think another receiver, and, and they're in business. They're Reynolds in business. dropped both those passes. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 a lot of edge rushers out there in free agencies this year. Yeah, there I mean, hey, gonna get one of them. you know, gonna get you one know what? We were just, we were just talking about this guy, and we were just talking about people staying within the division. What if the Detroit Lions just offer a shit ton of money to Jalen Johnson? I mean, they they need it. They need help with the cornerback. They need that cornerback. Yeah, they do. I think that'd be a good fit for the Detroit Lions. You know, like I said, Dan Campbell makes the boys play hard. I mean, Jalen Johnson would fucking run through walls. Mm-hmm. He would fucking run to Detroit from fucking Chicago. <laughs> Through the cold. They got to throw a lot of money, though. They got to throw a lot of money, though, because I think aside from that that uh, draft team discount from Chicago that they might get, I mean, I know that Jalen Johnson is commanding a lot of money. Uh, money yeah. is the biggest driver for him. So it's going to it's gonna ultimately come down to who offers him the most money. Um, I would like to hope that he's going to take a little bit of a discount to stay in Chicago, but even then, depending on what we're talking about, I may not even be willing to keep them yeah. out. I'll I mean, place them with a cheaper option so we can spread that money across the board. And there's there's, there's people that have the Detroit Lions in the Super Bowl next year. I'm not naming any names or anything. I but I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. Yet. 50, 53, $53 million in cap space. And don't spend a dime of that on your offense because you got Ben Johnson coming back. Your offense wasn't an issue. Go solidify your your backfield. Go get either Kyle Duggar. Wow. Well, you could draft Antoine, a receiver. Antoine Winfield. Go get go get um, Jalen Johnson. Go get from, Snead from the Bears. These guys these guys can solidify your cornerback group and or your, your 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 backfield group and really put you over the top and get you ready to be able to make it to the I have a name that's not cornerback. I want to say this. He's an aging fucking beaut of a man. He spent one year outside Seattle when he went to the uh, – where did he go? The fucking – God, where did Bobby Wagner go the year before Seattle? He played for – yeah, the Rams. The Rams. I'm telling you right now, the the Chiefs have a couple linebackers that are free agents as well. Bobby Wagner to the Kansas City Chiefs. He was one of the top-rated guys for linebackers, too. At his age, 
I get it. He's not the same Bobby Wagner. He's still lost a little bit of a step, but his losing a step is still one of the top linebackers in the league. You put Bobby Wagner and let him anchor that fucking linebacker core in Kansas City. I'm telling you right now, it's just adding more fuel to that fire out there. And I think it would it would keep that defense even more legit. I know they have Willie Gay, who's a free agent. And I, I think you pair him up with Nick Bolton and it'd be it'd be fucking wonders, in my opinion. I don't know. Bobby Wagner, I mean, he never wanted to leave Seattle the first time. Exactly. Went yeah, I right think back. He steps away. I I don't know what the Caps situation is there. I'm telling you, Bobby Wagner will probably pay for, play for league minimum. If I'm just saying, to. man. To stay there, I, yeah. If he wants I, to win, I, I agree. If he wants to win more than one ring, I mean, he, that's the way to go. Yeah, but and he didn't care. He didn't care. He was no. very vocal about not wanting to leave Seattle in the beginning. Went away for yeah. one year because he didn't have a choice. And then had a had a, had a you know good year in, in Los Angeles when they went to the Super Bowl. And, and Seattle's like, hey, man, we'll take you back. And he's like, yes, please. Yes, but he, he didn't even hesitate, dude. I'm he surprised that we haven't talked about Winfield out of the Bucks. That's the only safety yeah. I care. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I the only said. safety I care about, too. Uh, yeah, well, Bam. like I just said, I mean, I think the Lions should go and get pair him with Jalen Johnson or Sneed or something and just solidify that. I think the Bears, that Bear, yeah, well, I think the Bears could go after yeah. Winfield Jr. as well. I think that <sighs> they need help. We yeah. could. We did just cut. We did just cut a. So safety. I had Lions Bears written down too. So I think, I think NFC North is where. Winfield ends up if it's not Tampa Bay. I, I think he goes to the north and it's the NFC definitely going to be a, a very secondary defense heavy free agency. I think there's a lot of teams that are struggling. That we saw with the uh, the Vikings, obviously. I mean, their defense is, is pretty much Swiss cheese aside from Daniel Hunter, maybe one or two others. But uh, the Lions, we saw in the shootouts, they've had a problem with the passing game. The Bears, uh, Montez Sweat has you know help change uh, the pace of that defense, but they still need some help uh, losing Jalen Johnson. Eddie Jackson hasn't been what he's, what he used to be. We just cut him. Uh, we definitely have a lot of holes in the secondary that we got to fill aside from our uh, uh, linebackers. Um, and then who am I missing? Well, Packers. Packers, they don't really, they typically don't spend in the free agency. They're normally more of that team that they're, they're homegrown. homegrown. Yeah. Team. They're more old school. They, they, yeah. They've they made some moves here and there, like nothing that really, like, you know, takes us, takes your socks off and fucking kicks back. But, I mean, maybe now, I mean, it's a new GM. I mean, they're, they're, like I said, they're a year, um, they were a year too early, in my opinion. I mean, like I said, I had them five or six wins, but I think the Bears or the Packers could be a quiet team. I think. But that's. That's why they might make those moves because they went a lot further than people thought. Jordan Love balled out a lot better than people thought he was going to do. I mean, I, I think they thought Jordan Love was going to be good, but I don't think that they thought right out of the gate, kind of like an Aaron Rodgers. Um, the receivers that they had, I think that showing what they accomplished last year, as long as they can come back, which I think the organization is still thinking highly of them to where they don't have to go out and spend money in free agency on that. Um, I think the only thing left – I mean, they got a one-two punch in the running game. I think the only thing left for them is – the defense so fix that you might be good to go yeah now what before we sign off you, you guys have any sleeper like for, you know we did all the big names any any sleeper quiet names that we haven't really talked about like you guys kind of kept keep an eye on maybe see maybe could make a small little difference i got a guy i think is going to make a huge difference on a team um especially if he can get to the right team um, teams that utilize a uh, – and he's going to be a cheaper option too. Uh, but this is a guy not very well known. He had a uh, pass grade uh, – pass rush grade of 86%. Uh, percent. Um, true – he had a pass rate – pass rush win rate. Say that fucking you know, fast. 15.5%. Uh, um, his name – Andrew Van Ginkle from oh, yeah. the Miami Dolphins. He's a cheap guy, but I think you get him on a team. I would personally love him to, to fill in a role at the Patriots. You bring him in. Last year he started 11 games for the Dolphins, um, and he was one of the better pass rushers. He was, he got, uh, he was a high uh, pressure on quarterbacks, uh, got sacks, had a touchdown for an intercept, uh, interception for a touchdown. Um I think that Andrew Van Ginkle is going to be a guy that can come out and really make a big difference on a team um, if he gets that role. Question is, how many draft picks you want to give up to jump the commanders for, for Caleb Williams? 
Yeah, I just I don't think that that's really going to happen. The Bears have already signaled they're they're going for Caleb Williams, and and so Patriots are going to end up. I I think Jaden Jaden Daniels goes to the Washington Commanders, which means that I think Patriots end up. Man, I think Patriots end up going for wide receiver. We want to show difference. We maybe go Marvin Harrison, and then we try to get a quarterback in maybe the or second. Or next year, go back. get Sanders. Um, you know, I'm just saying. I said it in the Discord. It's possible. Yeah. Shador Sanders to the Patriots. Deion Sanders comes in and places Jared Mayo, and then there you go. The Sanders. Uh, I don't think that that happens. I, he's, I think Jared Mayo has been groomed no, for years. They're going to stick with him, give him opportunity. I think Patriots I go do for like another – Patriots go for another Michigan boy. Okay, don't do this, please. Don't do this. That guy. I mean, he had a better he had a better Michigan career than than Tom Brady did. You know, he's already ready. He did. I mean, he was a better Michigan quarterback than Tom. I mean, if you're talking collegiate career, he was the better Michigan quarterback. JJ didn't know. But my sleep. I don't want to hear this, please. I like it. We just did this with Mac Jones. I don't want the same guy. (laughs) Watch him. Watch him sell the farm to 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 trade up to the number one pick to take JJ with the number one overall pick. Stop it. That'd be worse than that'd be worse than the Bears. Took Brady with the last pick or almost the last. pick. That'd be worse than the Bears trade up to get Trubisky, honestly, because you got. Oh man, sleeper though. I have Tyler Boyd. I know we mentioned him, but I still think he's a sleeper name because he was kind of cast away. He was the number three. Got T. Higgins took over that number two role. Jamar Chase obviously came in was number one. Boyd had a decent little career early on with the Cincinnati Bengals. We forget about it because you know we live in what's going on now type you know lifetime, and that's because uh, Higgins and Chase are there. I think Boyd is number two somewhere. I'm telling you right now. I think he can help put a team over the top on offense. That's the Bears. If that's the Falcons, you know you bring him as number two. I mean, he could maybe even he could maybe even be the number one listed on the number one for the Falcons because Drake London's so young, but still they'd be interchangeable there. But you get a team like that that just needs a quarterback and a number two receiver. I think Tyler Boyd helps you out in way more ways than you could think. Honestly, I know he's had a kind of quiet career the last couple of years, but give him a shot. No, I like Mar- I like Michael Pittman to the to the Falcons. Oh, I take that. Jeez, man, yeah. you guys are. Yeah. I like I like. Actually, if you guys can get him and Kirk Cousins, I like uh, that. That's a good one-two punch to to put your offense over the top. But I'm going to stand by what I said. I think Tyler Boyd uh, getting that promotion from a third string quarter or a third string receiver to a second string going up to Chicago. I think that he has been consistent. He's balled out when he's been given the opportunity. When Jamar Chase is out, he put up the numbers. Um, I think he's a very, like you said, an underrated receiver coming into it because he hasn't been that every game go-to guy. Um, but I think that Chicago gives him that chance, and he comes in and proves it. Hey, uh, Chris, who the uh, who the Saints getting? All right, they got <laughs> minus eighty million. Well, who are they getting this year? Hey, they're gonna make a big splash like they always they do. They can't somehow. even afford they're, to pay the hot dog vendors. Fucking dude. Mike Evans is gonna go and replace they're, Michael Thomas. They're gonna, gonna trade gonna AK, happen. and they're gonna clear uh, some cap there. I, I, y'all need I hope, something. I, I. I just want Mike Evans to stay in the lead, in the division, so Marshawn can keep hurting his feelings. <laughs> Honestly, I think uh, I think y'all are fucked until you get rid of Carr. It doesn't matter what you do, and not just for the money. I'm, I'm not saying that just for the money. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it this next year. See what they can do That's without last, Pete Carr, Mike. Don't we say that every? Uh, don't we say that every year like, about our teams, Chris? Like we've been saying that a lot recently. I'll give it to next year. Didn't, didn't yeah, no, but, but did y'all take car for a two-year year. or a three-year? Four-year, hundred sixty, right? I mean, fuck you. But yeah, yeah but Pete, Pete Carmichael is fucking terrible. So <laughs> no, de- see, this is, Derek Carr is fucking terrible, dude. Derek Carr was outstanding I mean, the yeah, last five Carmichael games of the season. Is, is terrible, but Derek Carr. You're is talking. Terrible. You're you're talking to a guy that. Get Luke in here. Luke will tell you how great Derek Carr was. Hey, last Derek Carr won him the fantasy championship, about dude. The Ravens. Luke's, Luke's going to tell me something about the Ravens, dude. I don't want to hear it. No problem. Mm-hmm. Well, we hey, did hire I their assistant wide receiver. So I can tell him he's going to lose his entire <laughs> fucking defense, and they're going to actually have to play with Lamar Jackson, and they're going to be fucking trash. Oh, right? man. But, hey. I- Luke, tell us, tell us how good Luke, tell us how good uh, Derek Carr did in the last five games of the season. Well, yeah, man. I mean, you know, the the Ravens are going to go out and get a receiver. And, uh, <laughs> Damn. No, I mean, Derek Carr did win him the fantasy. We're going to hey, keep Derek Carr defense. did win him the fantasy championship for our redraft league. So, if it wasn't for Derek Carr, he probably wasn't going to win. On that's yeah, I gave yeah. his only loss in the year. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Or Justin Tucker. Oh, dude. Don't forget Justin he Tucker. Didn't have this st- yeah, anyways, let's, right. it's time to sign off, boys. And great episode. You know, way to, way to be prepared. Way to have some notes. I know. That's why Luke wasn't here, unfortunately. But we're trying to find things to talk about. So, I mean, the, the t- franchise tag's coming up. You know, we have that to look forward to. Uh, free agency's coming up a couple weeks after that. You know, the draft's coming up. We'll be live for that one. Hopefully on YouTube this year. We shit the bed last year with that. But hopefully this year we'll be live for the first round. But great episode, boys. Great to talk to y'all. It was good to be back in here, honestly. Hey, it was. Ravens got the, the most to lose. Ravens got the most to lose in free agency. They better, they better figure something out. I, um, I'm shooting shots at Luke. I'm looking for the Ravens to finish under 500 next year. Hey, that division nothing, is tough. Nothing would make my heart happier than seeing the Ravens sub 500. Next we'll year. we'll see that what happens in the draft, and we'll see what happens in free agency. Cause that's that's all we can. We can't really judge. I mean, you can say what you can say now, but nothing really matters until we see who goes where. And, what happens what trades go on so things like that but chris great to have you on here alan same with you and same with you doc it was good to be in here i'm mark davis this is all about the balls podcast and we are out thank you for checking out another episode of all about the balls podcast we want to thank all of our listeners and supporters of the sack house you can listen to the show on spotify apple Podcasts, and youtube and don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow on twitter and instagram at the sack house